Hey everybody, welcome to casterscorner.com. I am your host Khalil here on our live YouTube channel for Toy of the Day. Um, you can go to casterscorner.com for a full gallery of this figure as well as um, a uh, archive of our past Toy of the Days. And you can follow us, we are at Casters Corner on all social media. Um, Instagram has been hopping today because of what we posted and it has to do with today's review. Um, you can also check out the Cornercast podcast up on Apple Podcasts right now with our friend Dan, who reviews um, our first international guest. It was exciting. Um, so today's toy of the day was purchased just so that I had a reason to talk about this. So there's a new He-Man show coming out. It's called He-Man Revelation, right? Revelation, yeah. Ma or sorry, it's not even called He-Man Revelation. It's called Masters, I'm reading off the box, Masters of the Universe Revelation, okay? And I got the Skelegod figure. The artwork on this packaging is amazing. It's stunning. They did a great job with it. And if the figure looked half as good as this picture, every figure in the line would be an insta buy. I don't think it lives up to that. So the Skelegod is Cosmic Lord of Destruction. Skeletor lives his life... See if we can get it focused. Can't even get that focused. God, I'll try it. Skeletor lives his life with a singular purpose to control the unlimited power of the entire universe. Time after time, the bane of Eternia was thwarted by He Man and their heroic warriors. <clears throat> what kind of monster would be unleashed should they be unable to stop the Lord of Destruction? Surely a raging storm of horror and terror, even the bravest not dare even imagine. Okay. Um, the first wave shown below, Battle Cat, He-Man, Moss Man, Skeletor, and Evil Lynn. <clears throat> Those have not been found, as far as I know, out on shelves. Um, but I opened them. He's not in there. Um, he's actually right here. And I think for what they did, did a lot right, I think they also did a lot wrong. So this is the full figure. We got alternate hands for him, uh, open hands as well as closed gripping fists. Um, we get the, uh, energy blast. We get a full and complete power sword. Um, we get the H on his chest, like He-Man wears on his armor, his battle armor, actually. And, uh, we get a soft, good cape with multiple layers and some plastic, you know, things to give it some, uh, weight to it. I personally think it's a little too shiny and plasticky and pretty. Um, I wanted something closer to, like the head. The face on this thing is stunning. And we'll have a full gallery of this guy next to the old school Skeletor um, up on, on our website, casterscorner.com. Um, I think I, I did 100% buy this figure just so I can make this video tonight. Um, it is a good follow-up to yesterday. And I think it's an even better follow-up to what happened today. And so what happened today? Well, the internet's set aflame, right? Um, if you're dissenting in your opinion, uh, you're a troll. If you don't believe what they believe, you're a troll. Um, and it's a shame. Uh, one of the biggest things about this figure is it has very weak ankles for mine. That's, that's unfortunate. And I think it has to do with the wet weight and heft of the figure. But, um, so this Masterverse Revelations, Masters of the Universe, the, the tagline for it or the plot line is um, Tila has to step up in this series. And it has set the internet, uh, I guess you can call them fans of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, aflame. Um, they, and, and I hate saying it they, there, there is a group of people um, who are heavily offended by the new look of Tila. Um, she is in a much more appropriate, she is not in her one piece gold bathing suit. Um, she is in a much more armored kind of protected vest, pants, um, probably closer to her movie look in the Masters Universe movie um, with a new haircut, which is not a bun on her head or long flowing hair. It's much shorter, cropped on the side, you know, shaved down to the side with comb over. She kind of reminds me of Alex on uh, Supergirl. And uh, everybody's worried that he mans not going to be front and center for this series. And there's been some rumors going float, floating around about plot points, about He-Man maybe being 
uh, banished by Skeletor and Skeletor taking the powers of Grayskull and getting the power sword and, and becoming like this powerful Skelly God. And uh, Tila has to lead the other masters on a quest to find He-Man. And if that's true, it sounds amazing. Um, Kevin Smith is a nerd geek just like us. He loves this stuff. He gets just as excited for this stuff. In fact, he was on our podcast, one of our first episodes of the Corner Cast, either episode one or two. And uh, it might be two. And uh, he talked about the passion that comes from working in the industry and getting to work on these things. And he has fresh eyes. He didn't grow up with He-Man. Like, he grew up a little bit older than that. So He-Man was coming out as he was kind of entering that phase where we all kind of get out of this. And so he doesn't really have a dog in the fight as far as, like, making it, like, this thing. And, like, they came out in force. Like, I made a comment of, like what's the problem with Tila leading part of the show or being, you know, more than a background character for He-Man or, or a damsel in distress? Um, and a lot of it came down to aesthetics. Um, uh, you know, I'm not going to read. I'm part of a Facebook message group or Facebook uh, board about Masters of the Universe fans. And, uh, you know, everybody just jumped on this thing about, you know, keep Tila Tila. Um, and, you know, it's like, um, you know, comments about like masculinity and how putting her in pants or putting her in uh, more clothing than her bathing suit from the 80s diminishes the 80s um, and diminishes like how you feel about things. And, you know, one of them was, you know, I call it, I was called, plus, you seem like a real troll. Um, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yes, disturbing to you, little troll. I see what you're doing here, trying to pick fights and argue with anybody, just like any other man, my disturbing male pig views of a woman. That was a response to me. And just saying, you don't want her aesthetics to change. You're not talking at all about her personality. You're not talking about her character at all. You're just talking about the fact that they changed their costume and her haircut, and that is bothering you. And that's disturbing from my perspective, that that's what you're worried about. You're not worried about her character arc. You're not worried about her development as a character. You're not worried about maybe what happened to change those aesthetics for her. You just want to keep her in a bathing suit. And that is kind of weird that like 40 plus guys are arguing about it. Like, I know we argue about stuff. We're nerds. We're geeks. We love this stuff. We want to argue about it. But I think that there are productive um, ways to talk about it. And things change. Like, if you listen to the toys that made us and listen to the gentleman who created the show and their whole pitch of He-Man saying, I have the power, was to make little boys feel powerful. And they were really threatened when She-Ra came out because they felt that She-Ra killed the He-Man line because boys felt like their sisters had She-Ra and She-Ra had power too and it emasculated those boys. And that has to be one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life. He-Man died out because the sales for the toys died out. The movie flopped. It wasn't good. I'm sorry. There may be nostalgia for it, but it was not a good movie. Um, it didn't look anything like cartoon. It didn't look anything like the toys. They never made really made toys for it. It flopped because it flopped, okay? And they got ridiculous with the characters at the end, like even more so than they already were. And so this whole idea of putting He-Man up on a pedestal, just like Star Wars, um, these guys want to gatekeep. They want to keep things exactly the same but growing up for me i didn't like like he-man was my first action figure it caught my attention growing up i didn't like this figure like this was not my favorite figure this is not what i carried around i carried around stratos um i didn't want optimus prime i wanted jazz um i didn't want lionel i wanted panthro they were the characters that 
an animation sounded more like the people that were part of my life. And those sounds that they made, their voices, um, spoke more to the people in my family and that were around me that looked like that. And growing up, being a mixed race background and looking for characters that looked like me, they didn't, they, nobody looked like me. I liked Bungie and I liked JD and the Bionic 6. I loved when Cyborg became part of the DC Galactic Heroes cartoon. I liked it better than the Justice League show or whatever. I can't remember the name of it. Um, DC superheroes. Um, those were the characters I gravitated towards. And so the idea that Tila can look tough and lead the charge just as much as He-Man can, um, that she doesn't have to be a swimsuit model I'm okay with that and I think that these guys because the majority of these people that are talking about this are guys don't like the idea of genders changing and races changing because it somehow diminishes them one person put that um, it we don't paint over the Mona Lisa and I think that comments on my Instagram um, that that we don't go back and look at things from the past and, and paint over them. But we're not asking you to. We're not asking you to paint over and recast and, and recolor He-Man or Thundercats or Mask or G.I. Joe. We're not asking for any of that. We're just saying that the new properties should, and we, as in people today, want things that kids can look up to. Black Panther was an amazing movie. Captain Marvel was a great movie. If it inspired kids to be heroes, what's wrong with that? And seeing people like them up on the screen. Um, and it's really sad to see these guys be threatened by their, by, you know, their own masculinity be threatened um, by this. And, and I'm just looking up to see if there's any other comments. Um, and I had one deleted just because I said, I feel sorry for you. Um, because generally I, I do, I feel sorry for some of these guys and the way that they're talking. Um, what I posted earlier, um, uh, you know, that he man's the face of the franchise and, and, uh, making him a side character, the expense of empowering women is a kick to the face that those that fell in love with the series. Sure. Female masters are strong but they weren't the selling point for me when I was a child, and they aren't now. Not at the expense of making my childhood's hero irrelevant. Nobody's making He-Man of the 80s irrelevant. This new series is for a new generation. That's okay. It doesn't diminish what happened to you in the past. It doesn't diminish who you are in the present. It just gives kids today new heroes to look up to and people say well, why don't you just do something new make a new property make a new this make a new that it's not profitable jesse our friend jesse said it best it is not profitable for these studios to try to make something new a lot of times it flops and they don't really want to lose money especially the way the economy is going now with entertainment and everything going to streaming and you know there's a whole thing it really does come down to dollars and cents and if these toys don't sell guess what series is not going to continue i don't care who's backing it voltron was great the reboot of voltron was great toys didn't sell they just didn't sell and they pulled the plug on it um what else do people say I'm trying to see if i got anything else um oh this is another this one was great they literally made another cartoon for he-man type female character it's called she-ra and the princesses of power um how many gender swapped franchises have to fail between no one realizes that normal dudes wants to see that. Oh, I'm not going to say that explicit. Um, uh, I asked them to define that dudes that don't need to see their fa favorite characters change for the hell of it or foam at the mouth, making a character something other than what it was created as. And that really comes across to me. Um, as small-minded and um, 
and I'm, I'm trying to figure out if there's another one, um, small-minded and, and, and closed-minded. I mean, the idea of that is the same thing as saying, let's go back to um, African-Americans riding on the back of the bus. Let's go back to separate bathrooms and water fountains, entrances and exits. Like, there is no difference between what you're saying and that. And I think that, and it comes across that way. Um, uh, you know, uh, yeah, go watch she if you want something more diverse. You know, or want to see other things. Um, let's see, what else? It, it, I said it shows a lack of empathy. And here's... Uh, I'm fine with Tila being strong and having her own quest. Bring it on. I just hope she stays more like the picture and the caption. Which was like this. Um, I don't want to see her overly butch Tila either. So her aesthetics really, you know, bother um, her. And uh, let's see. The last one, which was the most ridiculous one, was blah, blah, blah. Yes, disturbing to you, you little troll. I see what you're doing here, trying to pick fights and argue with anybody, just like any other man. My disturbing male pig views of a woman. He called it himself. Um, I want He-Man he to stay He-Man, and I want Tila to stay Tila. Um, man and woman were created, plain and simple. Don't turn her into a man. This is what we're dealing with, people. These kind of arguments. These kind of people that are upset. It's damaging to us. And I think the thing that I came up with that I'm going to end on this is a lot of us gravitated towards this world of fantasy from Transformers to Thundercats to DC to Marvel to Transformers to He-Man, Bionic 6, Silverhawks. Everything you see around me. We grew up having to rationalize, defend, and in a lot of ways, um, protect ourselves. These gave us homes. I understand the importance of them and the history that they bring to us. The solace they bring to us, the reassurance they bring to us, um, the peace they bring to us. I, I understand that. It would be nice if we could give that back to the next generation. We fought so hard and long for our culture because this is our culture. This is who we've been. I don't identify by race. I don't identify by ethnicity. But this is our culture. This is our geek. This is our nerd culture. You know, you may like D&D. You may really like Transformers. You may like anime. And all of that is okay. We may not understand it. We may not like all the same things, but that's okay. We have fought really hard and long to be accepted, and we're still not accepted on most cases. You hear us. You hear us on the podcast. You hear me talking about it. We always have to hide who we are for the most part, and it really sickens me and disturbs me and disgusts me when we are as exclusion. We exclude those with differing opinions the way that others have excluded us through most of our lives and to sit here and watch this happen the day after i talk about what a great experience and what this brought to my life really sickens me that these are the fans that i have things in common with it disturbs me and it disgusts me and we can do better we can be better people so I'm using my platform here. I hope that it's heard. I hope that you guys feel the same way. And if you don't, go in the comments, but just be ready. You put your comments in a public forum and you're gonna get responses and you may not like what you hear. And you may not like what we show. We, we You may not like the mirror that we hold up to you. We're not trying to exclude you. We're not trying to shame you. We are just trying to say, look from a different perspective. Look at what was done to you in the past. Look how you were treated for the things that you liked and the culture that you grew up in and the culture that you call your own right now. And think about how you, the words you're using hurt others. And if you can't see that, 
I really feel sorry for you. Um, and with that, my computer has gone to bed. Um, and I have to try to wake it up so I can talk to you guys and finish off. Um, so that was my long-winded 20-minute <laughs> rant. An He-Man uh, revelation, or Masters of the Universe revelation, first Skelegod figure. We will have a full gallery of this guy up on the website shortly. Um, well, right now in the, in the comments below. Um, I hope it gave you something to think about. I really hope that it gave you something to uh, talk about because I think we need to talk about this stuff. Um, you can check out casterscorner.com for a full backlog of our uh, toy of the days. If this turns you off and you don't want to follow us, we are at Casters Corner on all social media. And if you don't want to follow us, that's fine too. Um, that's fine. Like we, I am who I am and that's what it is. Um, and you can check out the Cornercast podcast where we talk about this stuff and we learn about each other and we try to learn different things so that we can be better to each other. Um, I'd like to think so to make things better for us, um, on Apple podcasts, the Cornercast podcast. And if you like what you heard and you like what you see and you check out our bath catalog and you're you know, feeling the same stuff that we feel and, and want to continue this conversation, um, hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, the more of you that subscribe, the more cool things we get to do. And then, like we say every week, we get to share them with you. Good, bad, ugly, we get to share them. So thank you guys for watching. If you stuck with us, um, hope you guys stuck with us through it. And uh, hope you gave you something to think about. So uh, join us tomorrow for another toy of the day here on casterscorner.com. Thanks for watching, guys.